Hello. Hello, can people hear me? I'm not sure if people can hear me. Pam, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Yes, I can hear you. I've just sent uh, you an email to that effect. Yeah, everyone can hear you. But okay. because of the webinar, um, everybody's automatically muted. So everyone's probably said yes, but they just... Right, I can, I can see a list now. There's seven on the line. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little, okay. little bit different to what I'm used to setting this up. Yeah, no, it's an entirely different setup. But yeah, no. I can hear you. It's all good. That's okay. Hi, David. How are you? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, David. Hi. How, how's it going? I have control, so I can unmute you. <laughs> yeah. No, I had to. Work. I had to press it at this end too. It seems. Uh, okay. But you can see, you can see me. Okay, can you? Um, no, on? I can only see, I can just see your name on the screen. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't got, the settings are a bit different than I've done for other settings. Yeah. I, can, I mean, do you want to see me? Are you looking to see the participants or, or not? Uh, not really. Probably just, just keep, just names. keep the names. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. So I'll just give a few minutes for some more. We have around about 36 uh, registered today. So um, it's a good, uh, a good, um, good roll up. Thanks Pam for arranging all that. No problem at all.
So Pam, how, how are we managed questions today? Are we just doing them in the questions and answers box? Yeah, so it's, it's up to you. They can either do them in the questions and answering box or there's also a raise hand option. Um, so you can see, I'll raise my hand and you'll be able to see when people raise their hands and you can choose um, oh, who, to, who to go to next, if that makes sense. Okay, yep, that's great. It's up to you, I'll just lower my hand. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Brilliant. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So um, I might start, um, um, given we've uh, we've five minutes past. Um, I'm just going to put this on full screen so it looks um, <sighs> Pam, can you see the slides with with the participant list on the screen or is it just am I just seeing that? It's just the slides, only you can see the participant list. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so um, look, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining today. Um, this is the first um, webinar conducted by the Industrial Chemistry Division. So it's, you know, uh, a, little, a few little teething uh, issues, but we seem to have connected okay. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Gary Bowman and I'm chair of the Industrial Chemistry Division. Um, and I thought it was uh, relevant to hold this particular webinar because we're in the middle of a, of a consultation period with the, with the um, Department of Agriculture in terms of the Ag AgVet chemicals regulatory reforms. And that's what we'll be discussing today um, the main purpose for this webinar is is to raise awareness of this issues paper. Um, uh, as I said, it's open uh, at the moment for for consultation and feedback from stakeholders. And basically, I just want to run through with you some of the um, um, issues that have been raised in the paper regarding the AgVet uh, chemicals regulations and some of the proposed changes. Bear in mind at the moment they are proposals, so nothing's uh, locked in yet, and that's why it's, the, it's, a, it's a good idea to talk about it at the moment so that people who have an interest can, uh, can feed back um, through, uh, through the government uh, portals. Um, we are recording this session so that we can potentially capture um, feedback of a generic nature that may well form an RACI response. I'm um, not sure about that yet, depending on, uh, on what sort of feedback we get. Uh, obviously, the RACI represents a, a broad uh, group of stakeholders, so it's very difficult for us to take a certain position, but there may be some uh, generic uh, 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 positions that we can, we can adopt, that, that we can provide some general feedback. Um, so I strongly encourage you, you know, to take uh, a read of this issues paper if you haven't already and provide some feedback uh, relevant to your area that you're working in. The slides that are presented today will also be um, sent to you via Pam uh, on your email address that she's, she's got logged there when you registered. So, so you will get a copy of these slides after the event. So just to move forward. Yeah, so um, back in uh, September of 2019, uh, the current um, Minister of Agriculture at the time, Bridget McKenzie, who's been in the news for other reasons lately, but um, is mainly, uh, she, she announced a, a reform and a panel uh, to review the, uh, the AgVet chemicals regulatory system. 
So uh, from that point onwards, the paper was developed and then uh, released uh, earlier this year for for comment. So we're as I say, we're in the middle of that period of uh, of comment uh, now. Um, working on the expert panel uh, were four people, um, and I've just taken some uh, screenshots from the website here um, of those people. Chairing the the panel is. Mr. Ken Matthews, who, uh, you know, I don't know any of these people, but he seems to be a senior public servant who's been involved in um, uh, these types of panels before, task force with the uh, uh, National uh, Water Commission and so on. So he has experience uh, in, in, in conducting these types of reviews. Um, uh, we have a Dr. Mary Corbett, who um, looks to be a person who's uh, been heavily involved in uh, agriculture, horticulture, the dairy industries over the years. Very much a um, uh, uh, a woman who's been uh, um, on boards and so on in in, in the uh, you know obviously uh, food production areas, cotton research as well. Um, we have Dr. Craig Suan, who's uh, 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 an experienced vet uh, with uh, working with the um, uh, thoroughbred racing industry for, for 33 years, and uh, so he has a you know long history with with horse racing and, and veterinary uh, fields. And uh, Dr. Anne Aston, who um, again has a long history experience in dairy and various other other foods so a panel that is very much made up of um, primary producers as well as veterinarians and i think that's important uh, as we go through this you'll see there's a very strong focus on on that in the in some of the reforms so as i was saying uh, this issues paper has been released um, and it's an opportunity to provide feedback. This activity ha ha hasn't happened since the 1990s, so it's probably well overdue. Um, and, you know, the, uh, the paper very clearly states that at, the, at this point in time, the reforms are the point of view of the panel. So they're looking for um, uh, opinions and and challenges as to why these reforms sh should should or should not go ahead as they have proposed. Um, the deadline for submissions has actually been extended a little bit. It were, originally was the end of June, but now it's the end of August. So there is a bit more time to submit uh, submissions. And uh, if you go to the link that's on the screen you can uh, directly submit your submissions to the to the online portal uh, on that website. Um, so just just to go through um, some of the main you know top line points um, uh, of of the paper is that the the improvements are looking to be um, in making the system more efficient more adaptable, predictable, responsive and effective, uh, nationally consistent, open and accountable, and placing uh, at the centre protection of human, animal, plant and environment and, and health and safety. Um, and also to maintain a strong public confidence. So I think they're all uh, admirable objectives and I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, what's currently working well, so the, the feedback that the, the panel have received and then included into the, into the paper are things like uh, regulator independence. Um, that's, that seems to be well established. There's no political interference in the scientific decision making. It's a centralised based system, national system, so that um, it's uh, common across Australia without uh, variations through different states. Um, it's highly regarded in terms of its scientific rigour and technical proficiency. Um, the APVMA are considered a world-class regulator, so 
they want to maintain that 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 status um, and they are comfortable with their risk based approach at chemical assessment and continue to apply this for assessing trading packs and and protect our agricultural exports so the panel is committed to preserving these features uh, in any changes that are proposed. Uh, what's not working well um, uh, are some of the issues raised in the paper and then these are the, obviously the areas where they're looking to improve on. So they're saying that um, Australian farmers do not currently have access to the same chemicals um, in the same time frames as overseas competitors, so putting putting Australian farmers at a disadvantage. Um, they're saying that the chemicals uh, system is very broad and needs to be more focused. Um, and they you know they want to remove the duplication and crossover with other regulatory schemes. And this is particularly relevant for consumer products and industrial goods and we'll go into that a bit further uh, later. Um, it's not focused on primary producers, veterinarians and non-urban land managers. So this is a, a big theme that's coming out of the paper is that the AgVet chemical system is very much uh, broad covering lots of lots of products on, on the market, but the system is intended to be focused on those three areas and they actually want to um, uh, focus that attention a lot more for, for, the, for, the, for the new system. Um, they want to also remove um, obscure elements and, and difficult to understand aspects of the, of the system, uh, re remove complexity, costly and slow processes. Um, the governance and consultation arrangements are unclear and ineffective. Um, and they want to also uh, try and uh, remove these barriers that have been identified between Commonwealth and state relationships. Um, also, there's a, a dominance of pre-market assessment versus post-market compliance, uh, regardless of the risk. And I think that's another um, important aspect to particularly for those who are involved in consumer goods. Uh, that seems to be an area where um, they are looking to change significantly. Um, and the significant cross subsidization amongst chemical registration holders in respect to various levies paid, um, that, that, that is something that they're looking to clarify as well. So in preparing this paper, um, seven areas have been identified to be uh, the major um, areas for change. So they've no, noted these as flagship areas. Um, and these are listed on the screen. Increasing the national consistency of control of use, removing consumer and non-primary production products from the system, uh, introducing a benefits test, uh, changing the way chemical product efficacy is managed. Um, so I think that if you read into the paper that's looking at outsourcing efficacy, um, introduction of registration by reference. So that is also comparing our, uh, or comparing uh, or using re uh, registered products from overseas uh, to be allowed faster access to the Australian market. Um, some um, introduction of smart labeling, which I think um, is just a, a move with technology, which is, which seems, uh, appropriate and introducing an accredited assessor scheme as well. Um, now, I wanted to just note this for everyone's uh, attention that the, the, the new vision statement is uh, again, as I was saying earlier, very much focused on primary producers, veterinarians and, and farming. Um, so this is the proposed new statement, which is a new vision, which is an Australian regulatory system for agvet chemicals 
that provides all Australian primary producers and veterinarians with timely access to a similar range of approved avic chemicals to their overseas competitors while pre preserving human, animal, plant and environmental health. Um, now, I just, for interest, wanted to compare it with the current um, current vision statement and I looked that up just before the meeting today and if you and I'll just read it to you but the current vision is to be a world leader in ag vet chemical regulation that uses the best science and attracts strong investment to register safe products that advance Australia's agricultural productivity and animal health and I think they are um, important differences, particularly around the terms of world leader, best science and strong investment. They seem to be removed from this current uh, vision, which is, as I was saying earlier, very much focused on um, primary production and veterinary um, chem chemicals or access to veterinary products. Um, so I think that's an important point point for for discussion particularly uh for people who are not involved in those areas but still have um uh, their products regulated by the apvma and just moving on to that is um it's this uh idea that uh, you know many of these consumer products or industrial chemicals to be, to be removed from the system um, and they include the products listed on the on the screen so products supplied to the home garden and domestic market um, uh, particularly around pest control uh, anti-fouling paints pool and spa chemicals insect fer pheromone attractants um, products modifying the effect of another product such as wetters, spray, adjuvants, um, and spray markers. Many over-the-counter companion animal products, in particular impregnated materials such as flea collars. Most products based on essential oils or other herbal egg extracts. Uh, products containing only substances generally recognized as safe uh, set out in the regulation and all products currently excluded from the scope of ag vet chemicals regulations. So, you know, I think that's probably the, the, the main uh, difference that we're, that we're looking at here. So I'd be interested on, on people's feedback um, as we go into our discussion session uh, shortly um, and how that will impact on, on the business or the area of that, you, that you're in, or the area that you have expertise in. Um, so, so that allows me to move on to the discussion um, section of today. Um, so you can lodge a question, or you can raise your hand, and I can. Uh, open you up to to, uh, to to say a few words uh, it's up to, up to you um, but yeah I'd, I'd like to hear hear some people's comments on, uh, on 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 this paper and 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 what their thoughts are Is there any anyone who wants to to go first Maybe uh, maybe if I could prompt David to to to, to kick off <laughs> and if he have any comments. Uh, I'm I'm mute. mute. Ah, there you go. I can hear you. Now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. You've unmuted me, have you? Sorry. Yes. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, I, I'm I'm David Edmonds. I've been involved with the pharmaceutical um, science group in New South Wales for a number of years, and uh, we, we do orga or have organised seminars um, with regards to um, uh, veterinary um, drug products. Um, and there's in the list that you've shown, Gary, there's two things that, that occur to me. Um, 
if they're going to exempt a number of this list of products, who's going to take them up? Is that presumably Nick Nass? Um, uh, because so you can't is, just yeah. have, I mean, in these days, you just don't have un, unregulated chemicals of any sort. So yes. uh, in terms of this, I'm assuming, rightly or wrongly, that um, Nick Nass would have to pick all this, this list up. And yes. I'm not sure that that's a real, necessarily a, a flash idea across the board. Um, I'm thinking too that there are, they're now ex talking about excluding um, pet products, which is surely a significant part of the um, of what APBMA is is doing at the moment. And while flea collars and the like might be comparatively straightforward, there are a number of other um, pet and indeed, uh, of course, um, primary products that are Schedule Four. Now, if you if you're going to um, Take your pet products and companion animals and the like out of the out of the scheme. Who is going to administer the um, the ones that have got significant poisons in them? Uh, and it mm -hmm. strikes me that that's again going to be a, a somewhat of a dog's dinner. The other the other point that I would make to kick off is that from I've been involved in manufacturing um, veterinary product over over the years. Um, I'm, thankfully um, retired now. But overseas recognition of these manufacturers has been very difficult. And it's been necessary for anybody that wants to export to Europe or the US that the TGA inspectors have got to inspect the, um, the premises for its compliance with the Code of Good Manufacturing. Um, whereas in a for the local markets, you you organise from a list of pre-designated inspectors. But this system isn't recognised over, overseas. And if we're addressing the whole purpose of the APVMA, it seems to me that that's part of it. It's a real downer um, for people that are manufacturing for export at the moment to have to get the TGA to... Um, to do their inspections for them, and I'm continue to hear that actually organising this takes a lot of a, a lot of time. So okay. I'll, I'll just kick that off um, on the list. Where particularly where do these sorts of products go to, and and things that are nasty, perhaps like anti-fouling paints and and, and and pool chemicals, where do they go to? Um, yeah. it, it, uh, which perhaps are sensible, but certainly the the um, the pet products, I would have thought as animal products, should stay within APVMA, um, just as over the major overseas agencies, those sorts of products remain within the equivalent um, European um, drug organisations and the um, FDA rather than the Department of, of Ag with, mm. uh, with uh, as significant exceptions. But anyway, I won't go into that. Well, I think that that's that's what's unclear, and perhaps uh, uh, some of the feedback that that people like us can provide is, you know, we want a bit of clarity around where these uh, products will sit in the future. Uh, there is one other person with their hand up. I'll, it's Peter Vaughan. Um, hello, Peter. I'll just unmute you. Yeah, yeah, Pete. Peter Vaughan, um, QChem Laboratories. So I'm involved with uh, formulation um, development, product development, and the um, uh, submissions to APBMA for a lot of the uh, data that they require to register these things. So my question is, was essentially uh, raised by David. Um, so yeah, along a similar line, who, who is going to uh, who is going to regulate? some of these things, particularly uh, areas of my interest, uh, the home garden um, stuff, and also uh, products based on essential oils and other things. I imagine the ABVMA sort of seek to um, unclog their uh, workload by moving a lot of this stuff on. But, uh, but yeah, same as uh, David, I'm interested in who is going to do this. Yes. <laughs> And uh, and by by similar uh, 
similar regulation, we're just moving uh, these things somewhere else away from APVMA, uh, or are they going to be less restricted? Which would be my hope. Yeah, well, I think they're, they're the key questions, Peter. I, we really don't know the answers to that at, at this stage. Um, I mean, there is some, some discussion in the paper about uh, meeting, you know, the, all the requirements of Australian consumer law, um, Nick Nass, uh, and things like that, but it's 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 very uh, cursory. It's not uh, there's no detail whatsoever. So I think these are some of the things that we really need to to press uh, in in our feedback. Uh, a couple more um, uh, uh, people. Uh, Mary, uh, I'll just Mary Small. Welcome. Uh, and, I'm trying to unmute you, but uh, it won't let me. Here we go. I'm trying. Sorry, Mary, it won't. Uh... How's that? No. It's not the button uh, is not working for Mary, unfortunately. I'll I'll come back to you, Mary. Let's have a try with Bob. Hi, Bob. No. I'll try Wendy. How about Wendy? I think I'm here. Am I here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, hi team. First of all, I should disclose that I am an APVMA GMP auditor. Um, my comments are my own and in no way reflect that area of my employment. Um, I'd have to second all of the concerns of everyone else, particularly in regards to NICNAS. Um, NICNAS regulations are due to change in about six or eight weeks and I don't think anyone who's read those new rules and regulations would want to wish them on their worst enemy. Um, the obligations will be substantially more than what they are, including, and I'm quite serious, having to designate which waterways your chemicals will enter in the country for all of your chemicals. Um, I think, you know, at the moment, point in time, you know, chemical regulation we have is, is um, suboptimal for veterinary products. Um, I'm certainly, it could be improved, but I would be very frightened if it was moving to the new Nick Nass model. That's about all I wanted to say. Okay, well, thank, thank you for that, Wendy. Um, let me try Mary again. Mary? Can we hear you? Can you just say something? Yeah, do, do they have to unmute their own to get through on the left hand corner, on the bottom yeah. left hand corner? Maybe. Uh, try that, Mary. Yeah, All I think right. that, that's All got you. No. I'll try. I try, Bob. Bob, I think you're you're on. I think. So. Hello. Yes. Testing? Yes, got you. I, I, well, I just really wanted to ask a silly question of why this comes up. Is there something to do with the move to, uh, to the to you know, to Armadale? Um, they, obviously, a lot of people didn't go. That means they're shorter people. Or, or what's what's all this about? I mean, you need to look at things every every so often. This is quite dramatic. Yeah. Um... Just from reading the introduction to the um, to the issues paper, it, it's it's a you know I guess two things. Um, timely, it hasn't been done for you know twenty twenty five years, um, and uh, and the second thing is is looking to become more efficient and and less red tape. So. But but in 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 doing that as been, as we've. As We've discussed as well, sharpen focus on uh, on uh, primary production and 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 veterinarian uh, medicines.
Let's try Mary one more time. Unmute. Uh, can you? Mary's going to unmute herself. Yeah, try unmuting yourself, Mary. Bottom left. Sorry, I, I... You've got to wave the cursor around to pick the mute button up. <laughs> As, uh, I'll move to Bill. He, he's he's, he's uh, got his hand up. Bill? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, good. Just a, a couple of comments on uh, where the uh, control might go of those non ag vet products. Uh, there's discussion in that paper about uh, Australian consumer law and ACCC applications to these sorts of things, but they seem to be rather reactionary. I mean, in Australian consumer law, uh, there, there's no one uh, analysing the, the safety, the efficacy, uh, etc., of um, chemicals. Of, of any sort. It only happens after the event when something gets poisoned. And ACCC likewise, although the ACCC will require people to have materials, to market materials that have the information required, that have the, um, uh, the, the efficacy and the safety and all the rest, that again only comes up after the event, after the stuff's been uh, sort of sent out. So there seems to, uh, there seems to be not enough um, information about possible uh, outfits outside the APVMA to control uh, chemicals. Although I must admit, I don't know too much about uh, NICNAS. I should, I should probably add that uh, my background, I'm retired, but my background is in uh, animal feed um, industry, in particular manufacture of um, vitamin and mineral and medicated premixes. Just one other uh, slightly different co uh, comment uh, on this uh, related to what someone mentioned asked a moment ago about why this update. There's actually a very significant update to the regulations uh, in about 2015, whereby uh, a large number of products were um, put into the regulations as as being effectively being recognised as safe. These were uh, now, uh, now called excluded nutritional and digestive products. And uh, it, allows, it allowed um, many products to be marketed uh, as long as the manufacturers had the uh, appropriate evidence um, without having to be registered. And so there is a, a very strong precedent for making some sorts of changes to make the system more efficient. But um, the, the, I should probably add that the end product um, uh, changes were very, were, were managed very well with the Department of Ag and the ABVMA uh, consulting widely with uh, the agricultural industry, the, the ag vet or the veterinary side of it, um, the animal side of things. Uh, and um, it was a very good example of doing some of these things well. Yeah, yeah. So that that is likely to be lost uh, in these changes that you're talking about. Uh, not not necessarily because the second last point there, uh, it, it's something that would definitely have to be uh, pursued. But it says um, products containing only substances generally recognised as safe grass set out in regulation. Now, if the existing regulations, which are um, in the Agvet code uh, regulations uh, appendix three i think it is um, those regulations would uh, would certainly if they were upheld in any new legislation they would cover the, the stop top the stuff's already been done and preserve that uh, efficiency in uh, in marketing of, um, of substances it was particularly designed to recognize things that had already been included in overseas grass, and I use the term generically, systems such as the EU uh, regulations, the um, New Zealand uh, regulations, um, and some in, from the States and Canadian regs. So I could, I could see that that 
shouldn't be lost as long as people are conscious of it. And and it comes in under that second last bullet point there on the screen at the moment. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Bill. Um, I have a couple of uh, uh, things that have come through on the chat. Um, Mary's, Mary Smalls managed to send her, her comments on the chat here. She's saying, regarding home garden products for fruit and vegetables, these often have a withholding period on the label. Who will decide these periods? This is often complex. So... Um, yeah, good, good question, Mary. I don't know if we know the answer to that, uh, apart from trying to get a bit more clarity uh, from from these reforms. Um, uh, potentially, that's a that's a good thing to feedback. Um, also, on the question and answer, I have Matthew McGrath who asks, "How does the registration of materials using reference kindly explain?" Um, not quite sure what that means. Um, um, I'll move on to the next one and come back to that. Uh, Wendy is in terms of why the proposed excluded list looks like the EU GMP excluded list. It could be that they are trying to streamline with the EU requirements. So that's a bit of an additional feedback to Bob's question about why uh, could be could be coming in. You know, um, mirroring, mirroring the reforms that are happening in Europe, perhaps, uh, with the Australian system. Um, do we have any other comments? Um, are there any, any people on the line who are involved in pool chemicals, for instance? I think, um, uh, here we go, Peter Miller, uh, putting you on now, Peter. Uh, hi, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Peter, yeah, how are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Peter Miller and um, I work uh, for a company, Pest Research Consultants. We do quite a lot of efficacy testing for products mm. uh, covered, would be normally covered by the, the old legislation. Um, a, a couple of, one, well, a couple of concerns. I mean, I agree about the, you know, the difference between a pre-market assessment as, as, as uh, compared to, say, a post-market assessment via Australian consumer law or ACC. That would involve, I presume, an incident or somebody taking the company to court, which is a very long-winded process. So it changes the whole uh, situation very much, this. Um, it talks about excluding consumer products, and there's a slight anomaly because it says... If consumer products are, are, are involved in controlling disease, then they're back in again, which, for example, would mean I would have assumed mosquitoes would classify in that, and I would have thought cockroaches could. Um, it excludes vertebrates products, but rodents would come in back in terms of public health. So the sort of it, it's a bit weird. I mean, I would have thought in many cases a lot of things would be out and then in again. Um, but that's the appendix to that little statement, by the way. The other thing is it, um, it, it uh, excludes products for um, uh, terms of such pre-construction, I think it is, or termite control. So there's quite a lot of the pest control industry which would not have any sort of uh, efficacy uh, arrangements or any sort of efficacy data independently assessed from what I can see. I'm just trying to see the section where it says that, but it says... Uh, Products used in pre-construction inside prote insect protection. Well, the thought for Australia and termite damage and various other damages, you would want something, somebody looking into these products to see that they actually do give you the five, ten, or twenty years that they claim. Um, so mm. it, 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 it sort of there's a there's a few anomalies in the document, but but I do think overall relying on on the Australian consumer law and ACCC means effectively. There is very little uh, oversight of these products. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Peter. I think I think I agree with your sentiments exactly. I mean, the, you don't want to be in the situation where you have to constantly send uh, you know letters to the ACCC complaining about uh, particular you know 
manufacturer making claims when you when you know full well that they haven't done any testing or things like that. So um, that that's the sort of um, I guess that's the sort of scenario we want to avoid with with whatever happens in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, um, David. Yeah, can I? Yeah. At the risk of partially re repeating myself, the if you go to other agencies, it presupposes that they've got the expertise to actually review it. Yes. Uh, you know, pay people like ACCC and the like, with all respects, were probably not predicated to reviewing of of, of chemicals, uh, efficacy, safety, and the whole and the whole bit. Yeah. Um, that also makes it difficult for people who are in regulatory areas of companies to say, who do we actually submit something to? Where 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 what um, what agencies is the right one? Um, to be getting involved. And I could foresee occasions where a particular product might be relevant to both agencies if, in fact, another agency is designated for some of these sorts of things. So I, I think that they're, they're, they're likely to be going up with a whole um, area of complexities that at this, at this point of the thing, I'm not sure that they've... Um, that, that, that they've addressed or um, or even identified. Yeah, yeah. I think we have Mary now. Mary, um, can you can you try that? Hi, this is Hello. Mary. Can, How are you? <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, I have another point as well. Firstly, though, I would say I'm newly retired from the veterinary industry um, now as a consultant. Now, the other issue, apart from the uh, withholding periods on the um, home garden products, is the issue of companion animal products over the counter. Um, most, well, all current animal health products um, have a requirement that any adverse reactions, like, you know, your cat vomiting after you've given them a worm tablet that's all got to be reported back to the APVMA it's called pharmacovigilance now if the companion animal products go you know uh, what's the word sold off from the APVMA who's going to look after pharmacovigilance mm. for these products so, yeah no a very good point I mean and I think just in reading reading uh, the the way the paper is structured, you know, the, the, the perception is that these products are of low regulatory concern. Um, well, perhaps they're not <laughs> low regulatory concern. And that, uh, you know, things like pharmacovigilance, um, you know, efficacy testing for claims, they're, they're all um, very much important regulatory concerns. The, the, the racehorse industry is huge. Are they considered as primary or are they fall into your category then? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, exactly. Um, uh, do we have um, any anyone else who would like to make a comment? I think I can just lower these hands. Um, Uh, all right. Um, no, I think that's been a very good uh, discussion. Um, I'm hopeful, hopefully um, this has allowed uh, the RACI to bring bring this uh, these reforms and this you know the proposed changes to to people's attention. You know, I'd encourage you all on the line to reach out to your networks and. Uh, to you know, let them know that there's still an opportunity to feedback into these changes. Um, my understanding is that some of the trade associations like Accord 
and the Food and Grocery Council um, are also uh, putting positions uh, based on their membership input uh, in, into this uh, into this review. So you know, obviously, there's going to be quite a lot of uh, comment, um, questions, uh, clarity sought um, from from people's feedback. Um, so yeah, I, I just strongly encourage everyone to, to, to do that, um, and uh, then we will be able to to see what uh, unfolds when the uh, when the when the you know the the white paper is is released or whatever it is on in uh, 2021. So um, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'll leave it there, um, and uh, obviously you'll get the the slides. But the, the access to the paper is is online, and um, yeah, and um, um, hope that uh, that this was a benefit to you, and uh, you know you can reach out to your to your network. So. Thanks for everyone. Right, we'll, we'll close it there. Thank you.